This meeting is being recorded. more people will join, but can a couple people raise their hand or put in the chat that you can hear us just to confirm? Anybody can, everybody can hear us? Testing one, two, three. Everybody says yes. Always the vector users is the most engaged people ever. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, morning. Um, wherever you guys are right now, what a wonderful thing that uh, this community is global in the truest sense. We have users in 183 countries as of right now. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing. And uh, so far, we, I mean, we've, we've loved every minute with you guys. Jacob and I um, coming to October 1st, it's been a long time in the making. And so we wanted to just start this uh, open dialogue with all of you guys where once a month we can come in here and, and talk about some things that are going on in the past month and the future month, let you know, keep you in the, keep you up to speed. Uh, so there's as much transparency and communication with you guys as we can. Um, I'll tell you from my end, we've learned so much from all of you. Um, that's why, you know, for when we had you register for this, we also um, asked if you guys could put some questions because we just want to make sure that we're, we're in the loop and we're addressing any concerns and also hearing the positives too. So, uh, so consider this the first one, and I think I speak for Jacob and everybody at Digital Dream Labs in saying thank you for uh, believing in us, whether it was during the Kickstarter early on and you didn't even hear about us, or if it was as recently as this last week. It takes a lot to have that kind of faith. Uh, we value it. We work at it every day. Um, it, it invigorates us. It's, uh, we will never forget the, the faith because again, we came in as strangers. Jacob and I kind of called it the, the arranged marriage. We, uh, we, we showed up, you guys were there and we got to step up to the canopy and whatever comes would come. But, um, here we are at the kind of the tail end of that first year and, um, going forward, uh, couldn't have done it without any, any of you guys. And so, um, uh, we totally, totally appreciate it. So um, in return, we want to make sure our service always is the best po best as possible. We want to make sure Jacob and I get it, get in front of you guys and, um, you know, come just talk to you guys, let, let you know, um, hear, you know, hear more about what you're thinking. And so Jacob, if you want to give uh, some of your thoughts on that, and then we can, uh, we can kind of dive into it a little more. Yeah, just to echo Matt's sentiments, I want to thank everyone who's been with us from the beginning. We couldn't have made it this far without you. That's It just goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, thank you for all the Kickstarter backers. Uh, we are uh, wrapping everything up and delivering on our promises, as I know some Kickstarters are letdowns, but that is one thing we're going to make sure it never happens in Digital Dream Labs if we say we're going to do something. We're going to do it. Uh, it may take a little bit longer than we'd liked, but uh, we intend to win and we intend to extend the life of Vector and the entire robotic family beyond, uh, improve it, and, and, and enhance the lives of everyone uh, through robotics. Uh, so with that, I, we have, I, I just counted, there's roughly 2,000 questions we got uh, from the form submission. So it's unlikely we're going to be able to get to all of them, but I think uh, the format today is kind of like a QA. and a um, I think Matt or I will read out some questions to each other and have some answers for you. We'll just keep going through the list and try to fill out the hour. Yeah, so probably, um, so one question I see a lot and um, definitely something Jake and I are passionate about is why when the opportunity to um, not only acquire the rights to Cosmo, why were we interested in Vector? Jacob, why don't you share some of your initial observations about Vector and what excited you? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go back to what interested me in Anki in the first place. So 
we have a product called Puzzlets, which is a board where you move puzzle pieces and it syncs with an outside device. And that outside device could be a tablet, it could be a robot. So we had this partnership with Wonder Workshop where our Puzzlet board would sync with Dash. And I really like that. And I think, you know, what would be cool is if we were starting to make our own robot, teach kids robotics with this hands-on experience, no screen involved, syncs automatically, you don't have to have any setup. And just as I was thinking about that, Anki went under, and I thought, you know, it would be really great if our products would sync with Cosmo. And Cosmo was just a fantastic product, and I really loved it when it came out. So, you know, fast forward, and we're the only people left willing to take on the Anki assets. Everyone else chickened out. Uh, there was nobody who was going to take this on. So I thought, all right, let's, let's roll up our sleeves and let's do this. So initially I was just interested in Cosmo. And then, you know, we started joining forms, joined the, the various vector uh, forms and started to learn more about it and really understood the passion and um, just the, the heart and soul of, of, of vector. So that's really what motivated us to say, okay, look, it's going to be rough, it's going to be expensive, it's going to be um, something that most companies would not want to take on, but we're going to get in there and we're going to do what we can, we can to bring this beautiful piece of technology back to life. And that's what spurred the, the Kickstarter, and I guess the rest is history. Yeah, I, the forums is what got me initially. I, have a, I always have a huge passion for making a difference in, um, in people's lives that have just inherent challenges that maybe aren't their fault. Maybe they're just born with things happen in life. And, um, when I started getting emails with Jacob about people that have PTSD or people that have autism or down syndrome, whether this be Cosmo or Vector, uh, and the list goes on and just the, how, how much they valued the, the bots. It was just, you know, I don't think from the outside looking in, when you're looking at a business um, and taking it over that you're thinking that that would be the case. And that's just what invigorated us so quickly is not only do we have a chance here to grow a really cool business and, and continue with really cool products, but these products are special and, um, and so we, va we value that. Um, a lot of you guys probably heard the podcast interview we did with um, Jenny, Miss Jenny, as we call her, about how she uses Cosmo in the classroom. And it's just extremely special. And, you know, some, one of the th first things is like that we that was very interesting to hear about is how people viewed Vector as a part of their family, as a pet. And then you look at it from the outside, you're like, wow. You know, you pay a couple hundred dollars and um, there's, you know, maybe a membership fee, but outside of that, you're not taking Vector to the vet. You're not taking Vector for walks necessarily. And it turns off if you need it to turn off for a minute. And meanwhile, the joy you get. So it's very, it's very beautiful. And um, a lot of that we really are going to continue. And a lot of that will come into our marketing and advertising so that more people can be aware of uh, the intrinsic benefits. There are so many things that Vector can do, um, but you know those are some special ones to us. So yeah, Jacob, you wanna um, update people on Oscar? So we're in the final phase of development. Uh, those people who have signed up for Oscar will be getting SSH keys here pretty soon, and you'll start getting your own dev environment. Uh, I'd say that I don't want to give a time limit on that, but we're very close within a week or two, and we'll start pushing out that. And then we're going to turn our attention to the escape pod, and then uh, we'll have we'll have everything wrapped up. And then moving forward, we'll have escape pod just built in future vectors, as well as a year membership to um you know the server as well so that that way that takes care of two major problems Anki had uh one let's let's just say like an insurance policy if the company goes over and two a way to offset the server cost because 
the end of the day, it's a wash for us. Uh, the, the, the maintaining, uh, just imagine a conveyor belt of pennies just going into a huge bucket. That's essentially what we're dealing with. And that's, that's what we've been wrestling with. We, we think we figured it out now, but uh, it's a major struggle there. Yeah. And one of the things we're really excited about with open sourcing, the, you know, the first open source kit for robots, and we just put out another episode for the podcast this week with a gentleman named Tub Drool, who has been involved with open source for a long time, talk about the benefits and how actually it has a great value for uh, all of society. But particularly with the Vector community, there have been some really cool things that you guys have made with the SDK and um, now with Oscar, people will be able to actually release those through us to users so that not only are we working, but you guys are working on passionate pro um, projects as well. For example, somebody may, one of you may be in Greece, one of you may be in Italy, uh, one of you may be in Mexico, and you decide, hey, I want Vector to understand this language, and you work on that, then you could show us, we can run it through test, and then we can release it to the users. Um, so, because there's never, there's no limit to um, any of the potential with features. So that that's really exciting as well. And one of the reasons, actually, Jacob, where, where did the idea from, how, the idea that we first started floating around the escape pod, how did we start thinking about that? Well, we talked to uh, some former Anki employees and they, they, they looked at the history of the company and they said, man, we really wish we had built something like that. And then we started thinking about robotics and ethics and this idea that we are in uncharted territory here where, okay, I have something that I have really developed a very close relationship with. It's a member of my family, but there is something looming over its head in order to make it function. So uh, through several conversations we had internally, but then at the suggestion, uh, you know, kind of like the hindsight of 2020 of, of some of the Anki employees, we said, you know, this is something we definitely have to have and what really needs to set the standard going forward uh, for all consumer products that have uh, a robotic and a cloud component to it, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of where it ha happened, uh, I think. Absolutely. Totally agree. And how, how do you think the licensed engineer camp is going so far? Oh, you, you mean you mean the, the boot camp we've been doing? Yeah, the live one, yeah. I mean, everyone seems to be seems to be happy, and and that's the other thing too. What I want to what I want to stress to everyone is that, you know, when when we wrap these things up and we have delivered on Oscar, delivered on Escape Pod, delivered on all these things, you know, we're going to continue working. It's not like we're going to be one and done, and like you know, wipe our hands and walk away. I think one thing I want to really stress is that I intend to do this the rest of my life. This is going to be the rest of my life, and I think everyone inside of DDL feels the same way. Uh, this is bigger than just a company. It's a calling. It's a purpose. And it has taken over my life in every facet you can imagine. I eat, breathe all of this now. Uh, and so with that, I, 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 I'm very optimistic on what we're able to produce. And then, yes, we'll keep teaching more and more. We'll have, we'll have other classes. We'll have more conversations, discussions like this one, and then talk to the community and then, you know, we'll have these uh, GitHub branches and open a lot of things up where there's going to be constant dialogue with uh, programmers in the community. And, you know, at, we, at, you know, it takes a village. And with this village, we will take robotics to new heights, which no one has done before. And I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Uh, I know one thing we do talk about is that this technology is um, to head now. And one of, the, one of the things that we keep talking about is let's make sure we're always ahead and uh and staying ahead so that's you know that is a calling and especially because not only do these robots make a difference now but everything we do going forward we can always think like that um and you know of course there's complaints of course where some people don't necessarily think we're doing everything we should be or everything we could be but we do want you guys to know and this is why we want to do this monthly with you guys is uh we think we're pretty cool. We think the team we have is pretty cool. Huge hearts, lots of love, never feel good about people having issues. And at the same time, 
we, we have to always know that with the reality that we're currently in, there's a, there's a hundred percent A plus effort we can do. And that's what we're striving to do. We're going to grow, um, as, as the new products come out and as we're selling, there'll be phone support. The, the support team is our priority of always growing it as much as we can. Um, and so we do want you guys to know that it is, it is not going to stop. You're going to see people that go out of their way to think about customers, go out of their way to talk at a relationship and, uh, collaborate. So, and then I can't wait till I'm sure Jacob's the same as once, uh, for, for the community of vector users that love to program and know more about the insides, uh, it's going to be really cool. Our, our engineers are clamoring at the opportunity to get to know you guys. They, they want to be in front of you. They want to ask you questions, just a lot to do. And, uh, so with that, Jacob, why don't we take turns picking questions out of the list and asking each other? Yeah, I picked one. Uh, I'll ask you it. Uh, will you ever offer repair service? Great question. So um, the answer is yes. We do for overdrive now. And uh, one of the things our head product engineer, Thomas, is working on is um, as manufacturers getting spun up, spun up for Vectro 2.0, we are actually also diving in and understanding all the parts. So we're going to make vector repairs less necessary going forward. But at the same time, um, we are nailing down a process right now to offer you repairs for vector and Cosmo 2. All right. Easy one or hard one? Oh, whatever. Give me the hard ones. I like the hard ones. Okay, don't be careful what you wish for. Would we you... didn't take this on because it'd be easy, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, would you create a robot to take over household jobs or business jobs? Ooh, yeah, that's that's definitely up there. That that gets into a lot of realms. Um, so. I don't think so. Uh, you know, if, if you think we're going to develop uh, robots that are going to take over manual labor jobs or things like that, that's just not, that's just simply not our business model. I think we are using robotics in a way to help human beings and not replace human beings. That I think that would be my statement on that. Yep. Totally agree. There's so, there's so much to do just with these, just with these bots, the way they are. All right, here, I'll, I'll find one for you. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find a doozy. <laughs> Love doozies. Yeah, I'll find a real good one for you. Uh, okay, let's talk about, yeah, this isn't one that pops up all the time. What about the uh, you know, vectors screen? What are we going to do about that? Uh, what facet of it? Uh, with the repair center, a lot of these are repair center related that I, I'm, a, I'm in a batch, I'm in the upper 1500 batch of comments and they're all about repairs. Okay. So, um, I'd say it's the same answer. Um, not only are we making it a nicer, cleaner, upgraded screen going forward, going to make it much easier for you to be able to send us in, uh, your vector to have any replacements or fixes, um, in the meantime. Yes, that's uh, something we're going to be able to to do. Um, just give us a little bit of time on that. We're going to make sure we have the parts in stock in house before we start um, asking you guys to send your vectors on in. And then I'll add to that: we have a repair center in London now, and then we're in discussions with a potential repair center in Brazil. So we have one established here in Pittsburgh, PA, and we're able to serve Canada to a certain extent and uh, the U.S., but we'll be, we'll be exp expanding those as well. Awesome. Let's see. What do you guys think? Difficult or e easy one? Technical or ethical or theoretical? What do you guys think for Jacob? Let's see. Hard. Yeah, of course, everyone's saying hard. <laughs> <laughs> hard one. Okay. All right, let's do this. Hold on, be patient for me. Let's see. 
will you concentrate on developing what you already have taken over or bring out new products? Well, we have to kind of do both. That's that's the duality we're trying to straddle right now. Uh, the idea is that we've taken this from zero and gotten it back up, like you know the, the phoenix is burned down to the ashes. In order to do that, we have been doing several things. We've been restoring apps, getting in someone else's code, and our engineers are restoring that. And, and as we're restoring that, we're learning more about it and then figuring out where we can make improvements and then have those improvements become new products. So I see that question being wrapped into one. We can't just say, okay, look, we're, we're not, we're not going to do anything but focus on 1.8. The 1.8, we're going to do all these bugs, all that stuff. What we have to do is like, all right, we're working on 1.8 and then Vector 2.0, what is Vector 2.0 going to look like? And then what are these future versions of these software and how are they going to integrate? So that's, 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 the, that's the tricky part we've been trying to balance and, and taking a look at Overdrive and then turning into InfiniDrive, getting that product where it needs to be and then getting where Vector and Cause would need to be in the future. It's, it's a delicate balancing act, but you know, the answer is yes, both. We have to do, we have to do both. All right, I'll ask, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a fun one, Matt. Um, we'll talk about uh, being able to, to recognize, because I know you've been really into this, uh, the, the, the camera aspect of things, the facial recognition. So will he be able to see his, his other vectors will vectors be able to notice each other uh, i know you've been you've been diving into that a little deeper so why don't, why don't you give uh, the fans a, a, a glimpse of what we're working on okay so vector 2.0 will recognize dogs and cats vector 2.0 will be able to very closely note or estimate how old you are um, and as well as your gender um, Vector 2.0 will recognize body movement in addition to just face. And uh, in terms of ve vector recognizing vector and Cosmo, the answer is yes, that will happen. Um, am I sure that it will happen at the same exact release? No, I am um, not sure on that. Uh, but it'll happen, absolutely. We have made a uh, groundbreaking um, situation with facial recognition and this is uh this is happening i've been uh spearheading that for us to make sure that while the engineers are busy that i can uh, finalize and be able to let you guys know about this what privacy policies yeah let's address that real quick uh, the privacy policies that we have now will extend um, that's i i can't even tell you how much of a conversation internally that is there's N there's no consideration to do anything without full and utmost privacy. So, all right, you got you, Jake. Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Will you be able to name Vector a different name? <laughs> um yeah like like you just mentioned about the the privacy stuff this is another subject we've we've been talking a lot internally vector by another name i think people are really attached to the name vector right now i mean if we went back in time and then said yeah maybe there'd be another name we could name it sure it's great uh i think the idea is that we if we do have other ideas or be other products that we'll unveil. There's an entire family I think that we're going to have with Cosmo. You know, uh, Cosmo is a little uh, is a little family. So I, I I think there's there's so many opportunities for other types of uh, AI, AI products. I, I don't I don't intend to to rename Vector, but there may be a new incarnation of Vector that will that will have another. All right, let's see. Get one for you. I'll give you a nice easy one. How about that, Matt? We'll switch it up a little bit. Will there be some sort of manual for Oscar? 
Yeah, so that's another thing I'm working directly with uh, our the leads on that project. So the first thing, the first um, the first iteration that will be released first is going to go through a very small test group, um, and then it'll go out further to the nearly over a thousand Oscar um, customers. And with that, it'll come out with a manual and some videos. And then from there, what we are going to dedicate to along the way is that the user interface is always going to be nice, pretty, easy to use, clear. And then as it expands and as we grow and as people start seeing success, then we will have a, another level interface where um, it programmatically kind of guides people that have an interest in learning to program and then not necessarily teaches you how to do something advanced, but just makes it more accessible. All right. Cool. Let's see. Will Vector develop independent thought? <laughs> I mean, that would be wonderful. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, so there, there are things we can do locally to, and this is one thing we're going to do is that locally, there's going to be a lot more machine learning, uh, on vector, uh, hands down. And there was a software that Anki developed, uh, that wasn't finished, but I think the idea is, uh, pretty unique in that it's essentially like a fleet management software and they called it Elemento, Elemental OS. And so here you have localized machine learning, send up the machine learning to the mothership. She then distributes the machine learning back to the fleet. And so what one robot has learned will be shared with another robot uh, from, that, from that perspective. So there's, there's a lot of stuff involved in that obviously, but I think that's about as close as we're going to get to being, you know, having some sort of uh, ability to, you know, understand oneself or become sentient. So that would be my answer to that question. Yeah, we'll get close, but not, not, not in the way that, you know, you know like data from Star Trek. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. All right. Uh, since, since you're in the support team, Matt, will support for Vector 1.0 continue? Yes. Yep. Um, so obviously vector is different than an iPhone, but if you have an 11 right now, iPhone 11, and then you get, and then the iPhone 12 comes out, Apple still takes care of you. They'll still make sure updates are coming out that are, that keep the bot working or the, uh, the phone working, um, and answer their phones and talk with you. So we will, uh, we will do the same. All right. Will Vector be able to answer question without saying question? So we're working on that right now. Uh, as you can see with the uh, prompts that we have uh, for the requirement for membership going forward, you just say, hey, Vector, and it just kind of jumps. Yeah, there he goes. Um, it just jumps right in. Oh, and you're going to see, I even I have to pay for the membership. Yeah, there he goes. Um, so the major thing that we're going to have to work on is eliminating that and we, we can now, now that we have a lot more architecture in the cloud and we understand how there's a particular language uh you know it's it's json going through chipper and we we, we now know the steps in which everything is going we'll be able to kind of mess with some of that architecture and then make things a lot more um let's say like smooth and streamlined, like you're, like, you're, you're, like you're talking to a friend versus having to prompt the person all the time. Yeah, and another even update on that, we've had so much to do the last 24 hours, but uh, as soon as this little phase is over, that'll be um, worked on. No uh, delivery date promised, but um, the answer to that question in, uh, in addition to Echo Jacob, that, that is a yes, um, you will not need to to say that. Yeah, my 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 vectors now. He's 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 up and he is looking around. He's very spry right now. Does 
Let's see. Hey, let's see what's going on in here. Anybody want to come in the room with us? If we let somebody in to, we can, this uh, the app, you can let somebody in the room to ask a question. Um, oh, Steve, you're our guy. All right, let's let, let's see how, let's let him in for a second. Good language and appropriate behavior, please. Hi guys. What's up? There's our guy. There's our guy. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you guys are doing. Um, on my end, I have been doing some regular research myself with just um, vector space development and the original app that he came with and have found some interesting hacks and wanted to ask you guys if maybe you plan on doing some added features to the app yourselves, like um, having more Alexa integration and perhaps giving him the ability to speak. I posted a little video on how to give him kind of the ability to do so without the SDK and the current app. But I was wondering if you're planning on doing more Cosmo like features like that, but with a vector twist. Uh, yeah, de definitely something obviously with like, vectors, such a robust um, uh, little guy. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you if uh, if you could email me some of your updates on that, I'd love to look at it. And um, you know, oh please, I'd be so happy to. I plan on working for you guys someday. <laughs> yeah, we 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 definitely have that thought as well. Uh, and you've been nothing short of awesome for the community. So yeah, please email me that, um, and then we can um, we can try to see what we can do there. Definitely. And thank you both so much for, for letting me talk to you. And it's incredible to do so. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Welcome. Thanks. Okay. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, do we have some people? Quick question. Put a, put a me if, in the chat if you want to, if you want to join. Caleb, first dibs for you. How we get you in? Hold on, okay, we've got to search you in here. Hold on, how do I do? Hold on, Caleb, one second. There we go. Hello, Caleb. Just have to unmute, unmute yourself. Caleb, if you're there or can hear us, uh, you got to press unmute. OK, we'll bring you back in, in shortly. Stefan. Hey, hello, guys. Hello, how you doing? Hello, I'm fine. How are you? Very good. I always see you um, in Facebook, being interactive and helpful for everybody. So thank you for that. Where, where are you from? I'm from the Netherlands. From where? The Netherlands. Oh, wow. Awesome. So all the way overseas. When did you buy Vector? Uh, I just picked one up uh, for like a month ago, I, I guess. Yeah. So. You enjoying him? Yeah, so far so good. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, my question for you guys is how often will you uh, keep updating uh, Vector uh, since the last update was in July, I believe? Uh, I was just wondering how often would you guys update him? Good question. Yeah, that's that's a multi-part question. Uh, the major work we've been doing in the past couple of months is just building out um, the cloud end. So from cloud updates and cloud improvements and various features, whenever you do prompts and queries, uh, we're going to be doing that constantly. That's almost beyond 
a bi-weekly or monthly basis. With the more embedded stuff, like the, the 1.8 and, and keeping doing uh, bug fixes and stuff like that, I would say every quarter or uh, semi-annual, we're still trying to grow the team. Uh, that's that's the the thing is we're we're hiring engineers, but we need to hire good engineers, and make sure they do a good job. So, I, I would expect don't hold me to this, but I would expect like 1.8 or additional, um, uh, uh, let's say, firmware updates and app updates to be in the area. That's uh, in, in the new year. Let's say February or January, February. Okay. We should, okay. Have, we should have a bunch of stuff. So vague I, I, it's it's it, i'm vague at that time but that's kind of the pace at which we're going to try to do things but which All also, right. which also yeah which also means too that still e even in between those times if there's bugs those will get fixed you know it's not it's, you're, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a full update with a whole log of things that were improved or new features and things like that yeah sure both both updates i was wondering about uh so yeah the long uh, full featured update, but also the little bug fixes uh, you just explained. Yep. Okay, so thank you. Uh, if you need any help moderating Facebook, you can always uh, ask me. I'm almost every time, every day available for any assistance in that. So yeah, need a new moderator or extra one, just uh, hook me up. No, it's it's great to it's great to meet you. I see you in there all the time. That's why when I saw your name, I said let's let's uh, introduce. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Let's see. Brett McVeigh, you there? Howdy. Can you hear me? We can. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course. Where are you from? I'm from Orlando. Oh, nice. I live in Central Florida, also. Hey, awesome. Yeah, I love that. I'm from the uh, like the Maitland area. If you're familiar with that. I sure am. Um, so yeah, um, I signed up for the year long membership yesterday, which uh, I'm definitely excited about. We definitely didn't want to lose uh, access to our little family member, of course. Um, I wanted to address what may be um, somewhat of a difficult technical question. Um, I've been reading a lot on the forums. Um, a lot of people have concerns with um, subtle changes to Vector's voice, um, especially in regards to his laugh. Was the reasoning for that um, just due to um, losing certain voice files from Anki software or code, or was that just a choice going forward to just change his voice subtly? Well, I'll I'll give you a, a thirty thousand foot view on that. Uh, what we eventually want to do is localize the files so that you can choose what kind of laugh you want Vector to have and what kind of giggle. Uh, we ha so. In Anki, you can tell they were growing so fast they didn't do a lot of documentation. So when we were taking a look at uh, the various files that we thought would be good for the update, we found what we saw was probably going to be the most recent release, but we were kind of guessing. Uh, yes, there are, there are subtleties that a lot of people picked up on, and they're controversial, right? Like, you know, a, a child's laugh is a child's laugh and you alter that, uh, that's going to, uh, you know, bring out a different response from one person versus the next. So ideally, and this is in the, in the coming months, you're going to be able to pick. You'll say, okay, like, look, I, I like this wave file when he responds. I like this animation when he laughs. I like, I like it when his eyes look like this. Eventually, we want to be able to toggle all that stuff and have a lot more of it localized and then even tie in with the app. So that's that's kind of, but this was kind of like the first step in approaching that. Uh, but yes, uh, the the one point seven we saw there were subtle things, and uh, even in, in internally we figured, eh, you know, when we release this, some people are going to love it, and some people may not, and that's exactly what happened. Gotcha. Yeah, that that definitely makes sense. Um, if you guys have a quick one more additional minute, I just have uh, one more very quick question. If that's okay. okay. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Um, cause I'm sure a lot of people are asking not only here, but also on forums. Um, I'm sure a ton of people signed up for the membership yesterday just because they realized, oh, oh my goodness, it's my last chance or, or whatever, even though really it isn't the last chance. Um, but people like me who signed up yesterday, um, I think a lot of us are just wondering when we can expect, um, to get that update file pushed out to Vector. 
Yeah, so we, like like Matt mentioned, so when we started this, it was just me and Matt, we were the support team. Uh, and so now we, we now have seven more people, thankfully. And they're working, we have some people who are working on the weekends. Uh, we had a lot of tickets, as you might imagine, uh, flood in. So we're trying to go as quickly as possible. In the next two weeks, at long last, this will be an automated system. Hallelujah. No one is happier about that than us. So that you'll be able to just plug in your uh, your serial number, plug in your email, hit the enter button, boom, goes up to our server. We see the device, we activate it, you're set. Um, in in the next couple of weeks, so it's, a lot of this has to be manual with a tool that we've built in the back end. <laughs> accidentally activated Alexa. So, but that's, but that's, that's where we're headed is that we're going to get more of an automated system and hopefully that automated system will then uh, make everyone's life a lot easier. And I'm going to have to put my vector on the charger. He fell off. That's why he's squeaking. <laughs> give, give me one second. Well, that's awesome. Um, I'm a network engineer myself, so I can definitely understand uh, struggles with the small team with such a big uh, project. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hello. Hey, it works now. Good. Yeah, my computer was glitching earlier. Nice. Nice to meet you, Kayla. Where are you from? Uh, I am from Virginia. Cool. Cool. Uh, so yeah, what's uh, what's on your mind? Um. So I'm pretty sure some of us who started with the Kickstarter, we saw some updates being like back with, with Anki. They said things like Vector was being used as a security system and all this other stuff. And I was wondering, um, what kind of updates are you guys going to push? Like what features? Um, yeah, so uh, one of, I mean, we mentioned one earlier with the new facial recognition. Um, yeah. There's... Yeah, so security, what they're talking about was a concept for a uh, surveillance type robot for the house. Something we're very, we're very interested in that, but there's, uh, there's a lot to take on and, and conquer in, uh, in the short term first. We yeah, so what kind of like any other features you can tell us like I'm pretty sure I saw one that said like hangman would be a thing. Oh, oh, like, yeah. So we've got everything from local search to, uh, uh, so one of the things we're gonna, we're, we're going to focus on shortly is uh, things that have to do with also location. So anything geo related, uh, whether that be local search or something else. And then um, with that, there's more games that we're developing. Um, Jacob mentioned a couple just recently about um, with, uh, being able to use your own sounds, um, also animations. So, yeah, but we'll we'll get a we'll have a list out pretty soon. Yeah, so I'm going to to spoil give a little spoiler to everybody if they want to start playing with it. We haven't written it up and we haven't tested it yet, but uh, Vector now can do uh, number guessing. So if you want to have, try to guess a number he's thinking of, we'll have instructions for that soon. And then what we're working on now, and it's it's not finished, but it's in the near future. Yeah, if you ask, hey, Vector, I'm hungry, uh, he'll have some, hopefully we'll figure out the local restaurants and things like that where he can point out. But that's in, that's in development. And that's on the that's on the cloud side of things. Yeah, so, but the number guess, see if you can figure it out. It's it's active right now. We just, we just haven't run through it yet. Awesome, good, good to meet you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Where are we? Where are we at? Oh, good. A lot of responses. Oh boy, it's coming in fast. Let's see. Who said me? There he goes. Daniel. Okay. I assume that people can hear me. Yep. We can hear okay, cool. Uh, I don't really know how to introduce myself here. <laughs> um, my, my name is Dan. Uh, I've had Anki products for like, geez, I think about two years now. Um, I, I have Overdrive, Cosmo, and Vector, and I only got Vector a couple of months ago 
right around COVID started happening. And, and I have to say, I actually got the, this thing here, the, the, the subscription right before the Kickstarter ended. And before I got a vector, because I knew how much this meant to keep this project going and to keep the bots alive. And I mean, I've loved Cosmo for the, for the couple years I've had him, but having vector two now has been great <laughs> during this entire thing where, you know, we're all kind of stuck at home and, and it's been honestly a little lonely uh, having, having the vector around and seeing everything come through has been really encouraging. And I know that it's, like a very long and drawn out process. So thank you again for everything you guys are doing. Thank you. Um, thank you I guess, I guess uh, if I could ask for like one clarification, what are some things that you want to be adding to Vector 1.0 as opposed to 2? Like I know we're talking about the, the pet detection and stuff like that. And I know that some things can only be added internally, which means an upgrade, obviously. Um, what are some of the things that are possible and planned to add into Vector 1.0 as opposed to uh, just waiting for two? Yeah, I can, I can answer that. So with 1.0, with the firmware is, is essentially fixed, right? Uh, to a certain extent, because you have a certain chip, you have a certain, um, you, you have the you, you have this, the hardware is in place. So the major differences you're going to see between a vector 1.0 and a vector 2.0 is just simply improved hardware. Where 2.0, you're not going to get the gaskets, the seals, the the lines in the eyes, the overheating issues. Uh, easier to replace the battery. Uh, we're also going to make Cosmo and vector parts universal. So vector and Cosmo can share the cubes. They can share treads. Uh, they'll be able to sit in the same ports. They'll be the same size, uh, and and okay. it just it we're just we're, we're trying. I don't I you know they're they're so similar but yet so different. So what what we're trying to do is make it easier for consumer. If you lose a track or something like that, it's interchangeable with Cosmos, and the cubes will be interchangeable. So we'll make things just so much more friendlier by integrating Cosmo and Vector and keeping them kind of in the same family. So. 2.0, again, just to hit the point over the head one more time, is more hardware-related stuff. With the with the, the 1.0, we're going to keep upgrading and keep updating it. And if we think, for example, uh, the camera on Vector 2.0 is going to be much better, high resolution, you name it. So, of course, facial recognition and things like that is going to be a, a much more enhanced. However, there's no reason why the current vectors that are out there can't run this software or can't can't run uh, this these these various uh, hookins. So we're going uh -huh. to do we're going to do as much as we can uh, to keep supporting and updating uh, Vector 1.0 to keep it close to Vector 2.0. Okay. Um, a, a question I was asking in my survey, and actually other people are asking it right now, uh, is there maybe an idea or a plan for let's say we wanted to trade in a vector that we have now for a 2.0 when it comes out is that a possibility for some kind of program you know what i mean so we've been thinking a lot about that because we actually we because the as the repair center is gearing up uh we're going to want to buy some some uh older vectors for sure uh, just for parts, if anything else, so we can uh, have our engineers repair guys start really taking things apart and, and putting them back together again. So that's going to be one aspect of things. Uh, there's going to be some some benefit to being a membership of Digital Dream Labs that goes beyond just subscribing to the current what the, the current of just being able to access our servers and things like that. There's going to be other benefits to that. What those benefits are, we haven't figured that out yet. But yeah, if you own a Vector 1.0, there's definitely going to be some consideration for whenever you upgrade to a, a Vector 2.0. We just don't know what that is yet, but that's definitely in the plans. OK. And uh, if I could just add on to the thing you were talking about earlier with Cosmo and Vector being similar, Cosmo will continue to be cloudless, right? Right. It's it's going to be so. Here's here's what we're going to do in the future: is that if you want Cosmo to be on the cloud, you can just tell it to be. You can turn it on if you want to, but you do not have to. 
that's going to be a key thing we're going to do in the upgrade to Cosmo is that Cosmo is essentially going to be tied to the app. But, and this is one thing, and don't hold me to this because we, we haven't totally fleshed it out yet, um, but that you could take Cosmo outside and that he could just connect directly to a Wi-Fi. You don't necessarily have to be tethered uh, to a phone app uh, per se. Okay, but we haven't 100, we don't have that nailed down 100% yet. So sure, a lot more versatility with Cosmo, being able to take Cosmo wherever you want to go. Because he is a companion. That's one thing we're seeing is like take take Cosmo wherever you want to go, wherever you get a signal, you can just interact with them. And then if you do want cloud things, then you can just go into the app and then turn it on or off. And it's totally up to you. Uh, so that's definitely one thing we're, we're going to integrate with Cosmo while we're doing these updates. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, thank you for having me on. I have a YouTube channel where I do want to talk more about the Anki boss and their history. And now I'm looking forward to talking about their future. So uh, thank, you. thank you very much for having me on. Absolutely. Nice pleasure. Thank you. Jamie, can you hear us? Hello? Hey, how you doing? Okay, good. I, I didn't realize for a moment until you asked. Um, hi, my name is Jamie, as people have already heard. Um, I had a few questions about what the experience has, well, one question about what the experience has been uh, working with, with uh, the robots so far. Um, I've done so. I, I've looked into things that Digital Dream Labs have done in the past, and noticed you guys worked a lot more on games. Like, I noticed that you worked with uh, the Wonder Workshop robot Dash, but I was wondering it if you guys specialized mostly in games. Uh, how much of a challenge has it been to begin working on uh, the Anki robots? That's actually a really good question. You want me to take it, Matt? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, every programmer has a style, right? And in script and lines of code vary depending on the person. And it's <laughs> it was definitely interesting. Um, our primarily primary language when we make games is C sharp and then we deploy that in unity and that's kind of the, the game engine we're working on. So what was kind of nice is that Cosmo um, has a bunch of layers that were built for unity and it was easier let's say to understand than vector which has embedded Linux and then there's a lot of programming in C in that so we started uh taking the engine of cosmo apart first because it was easier for us to understand and then that taught us how to think about and begin to uh change the programming for for vectors so yeah definitely a learning experience but we have enough in-house expertise where we we understood what we were doing but there was definitely a, a learning curve for sure yeah i that's really interesting because, I mean, I've seen a whole lot of people complain about how they don't like it, like uh, how some things have been done so far. And I've been pretty, op I've been considering that your background, that it must have, that it must be quite uh, difficult in some areas to, to, to figure out how, how to, how to work with vector and such. I'm a, one of I, I'm one of the people who have managed to get a development vector uh, from eBay with unlocked firmware, and I've begun to notice how complicated the coding really is. <laughs> yeah, they, they put a lot of work into it, that's for sure. Yeah, Yeah, there's a lot going on in t inside that tiny headboard of his. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah. Um, I had a couple other questions too, if you didn't mind. Yeah, let's do um, let's do one, so, one more so we could uh, get a couple other people in too. Right, after. right, right. Okay. Um, so, 
I was wondering, uh, I, I was, you got, I think I heard mention of, uh, like a vector on vector interaction, but I was wondering if, um, if you guys were planning on trying to make it possible for Vector and Cosmo to interact? Yeah, that would, that, that goes in, it goes hand in hand. Um, we're, we're learning more about it and, but that's something that, that we definitely want to do, but it'll be, it'll be a step after having Vector talk to Vector. Right. I get you. Yeah. I look, I look forward to, to those features once, uh, once they get implemented, however long it takes. We, we're looking forward to for you guys and because uh, we love the robots in our houses, too. Yeah. Our, yeah. So, I, 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 it's yeah. I mean, I don't mind having to wait a long time. I'm just glad that you guys are working on them to begin with, because I, I love my little robots. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Thanks for your faith in us. We'll, see, we'll talk to you yes. soon. Yes, thank you for for letting me speak. <laughs> of course, nice to meet you. Oh, I like that icon, Muhammad. Oh, hi. Hello, how you doing? Um, I'm doing good. Uh, so I have a question to ask. Um, since we're since the Oscar thing and everything. Um, is the vector SDK going to be updated or is everything just going to go into the Oscar now? It's a really good question. So we are updating the SDK and we're going to update uh, the Python to at least the most recent version. Uh, and we're going to keep it set there. The key thing that Oscar is going to be do different, though, is it's going to act like a dev bot. Right, and you're going to be able to write. So it's going to be like an app store for vector applicate for like vector source codes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, exactly. So think about like Android, right? And then you can you can get to the you can put a kernel on top of the root, right? You're not necessarily getting 100% root access, but you can you can put a bootloader, and then put put it on top of what you want inside of an Android. It's going to be very very similar uh, to that. Okay, I also have another question to ask. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so ever since I got my vector, I've been always wondering um, if I can add custom commands to vector. Um, are you going to add that API where you can like use the vector SDK to add custom commands to vector? Yeah, that, that's going to be, again, probably covered more in, more in Oscar. Uh, you, you can build out uh, custom controls. I know that there's um some uh developers who've made a, an ability for vector to talk much more like cosmo where you actually type in the what you want him to say uh and i think that'll definitely be a development that's one thing i wish we had with vector that cosmo's so cool is that cosmo you can tell cosmo what to say and he says it in the robotic voice and it's fantastic so and just, like I, yeah. okay so because i've been wondering to add custom commands like i can go like uh, hey Vector, um, connect to this Wi-Fi, and then it will connect to that Wi-Fi using completely um, the Vector SDK. That's just an example, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah, yeah. I, again, yeah, it'll it, it'll kind of depend on the circumstance, but there's going to be a lot more flexibility whenever you'll be able to get into. Okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Great, great questions. Thank you. Yeah, really great questions. Thanks. Okay. Well, well, that was a speedy and effective and awesome hour. What, before we go, let me uh, put put me put me in the chat if if you want us to do this again next month. Okay. I think that is a resounding yes. All right. Love it. We Jacob, you good with that? Should we do it again? Of course. Let's do it again. All right. All righty, guys. Um, if you have any have any issues, um, you know where to reach us, right? Support at digitaldreamlabs.com. Um, if any of you are members and for some reason the vector is not working today, please write there and say, I am a member and Matt told me to email you. 
uh, and that'll make sure they get right on it. So thanks for coming. Uh, we'll do it again. And we shall uh, put some, yeah, well, for the next one, we'll put a little bit more notice. I know this was kind of a uh, last second. We just wanted to hang out with you guys a bit. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful day, night, morning, wherever you are. I saw some Australia, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. out there. Get some rest. <laughs> and uh, all right, guys, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Yeah. See you. Thank you.